Hello, how are you? I hope you are well. Thank you so much for joining us today at Beautiful Literature with me, Teacher Martha. Thank you. I appreciate you and I don't take it for granted. Every time you decide to come in here and check what it is we are doing, it is never ever to be taken for granted. Thank you. And so uh, if you're new here, we want to welcome you and to let you know that we have been doing well. We are doing the analysis of the Samaritan. We are in Act 4, Scene 1. We have already covered the other Acts, Act 1, 2, and 3. And uh, we've also covered the other textbooks, that is uh, the Parliament of Owls, and we've also covered the Fathers in totality. And so when you get a minute, just have a look at what we have done. And so I want us to see, to move on to Act 4, Scene 1. And uh, it's a very short, uh, short one and uh, very, very simple. And so we'll make it a bit fast. But while we are at it, I want to encourage you, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't... Um, uh, shared this with anyone who is interested in this content. If you haven't done a comment and uh, even liked, it is important for you to do so. That is, it is important for me. And so I would encourage you to do that for me because it will help in the growth of the channel. And uh, so even as we carry on with scene one, I want us to remember that there's already, already a lot of trouble going on with uh, Judge uh, Jaden because the last meeting we had, he actually was having hallucinations on 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 stage, and uh, he's worried, he's anxious, he's scared, and he's actually seeing rats and rodents coming, you know, and the smell, you know, and they are so big. The ones he can see, they actually look like sewer rodents, and so we know why he's having an issue with rodents because he and his girlfriend Ivy, they were they are involved in rearing them, and we are told that the ones they rear, they have an attitude, they have a bad temper, they don't even get off the road when they see you they don't get scared of human beings because after all they are just they are domesticated they are they smell domestication and so therefore um in this scene therefore we not see rodents but he's trying to deal with that crisis because the people he's been asked to prosecute that is Ramdai, Basdeo, Timo and uh, Honorable Ted they are his friends they are people that he's got into crime with. They are part of his skeletons and they are shareholders in Prime Orchard uh, Limited. And the reason why he, they got them here, there is because they, they knew what he had done. And so for them to keep quiet, they got him into shareholding. And so he does not want to prosecute his friends. He does not want to protect, prosecute his partners because he knows how that will rub on, on him badly. And so he's in a difficult situation. This Mayor Mosi and Bembe, they are, they are threatening him that they will expose him and they will actually take him to the police station for recording of statement. And whatever they want is for him to do something that is against what really is human. And so he has a meeting with Harvester. I hope you know who Harvester is. And Harvester walks in and the meeting is, is a very sad one because uh, Jaden is telling him, I don't know what to do anymore. I will get straight to the point because I think there is no time. We have come a long way, you and I, and I'm in a mess. I need your help. It concerns the Samaritan. Do you remember the Judge Jaden who was saying, I have nothing to do with you people. Whatever it is you're discussing, it's really none of my business. And I don't even try to drag me into your messes because you went around having, uh, laying your skeleton everywhere. Me, I hit mine nicely. Now suddenly, the judge is the one who is saying, I need help. What am I supposed to do? And then Harvester says, I am in no better position. I'm accused of countless crimes now. Remember that Harvester is a representation of religion. He's actually the born-again Christian in this uh, in this text. And uh, he's an advisor to the Mayor Mosi. And we know him. We, are, we, we recognize him as such. Even in the earlier meeting, in the first meeting that they ever had, you can see uh, Harvester was involved in it. And he's says that you have you have you been accused of countless crimes and he says yes I have and he says I have never set out to do any wrong myself I have never stolen or intentionally done anything wrong I've been crucified for the minute for the things Mayor Mosi tells me to do but you know I have a Christian duty to obey my leader but don't worry about me just tell me about yourself 
my whole family, that is my wife, my children, and I are fasting and praying. We trust God to get us out of this mess. I haven't known my God to fail the innocent. That sounds very familiar. Sounds like our church cliches that we'll keep saying when we're in church. That even when it's you who is supposed to do something about it, you will place it on God and say, God is going to come through. God is going to do something about it. I'm waiting on God. And maybe sometimes it is not. We are not supposed to be waiting on God. Actually, God is waiting on us. He's waiting on us to do something, to respond, so that things can run. And so Harvester is here saying, my husband, my, my wife and the, my children are fasting over this issue and so don't worry me I'm sorted I am okay and he says by the way those crimes that you hear people accusing me of it is not me I keep doing what my leader wants and as a Christian I can't fail to do can you imagine what kind of reasoning is that it's an embarrassment to the religious religious affiliated uh, whatever people and so on and uh, so we have the conversation going on and tells him why I'm having a problem. He says, Mayor Mosi is now, has now instructed lawyers acting for the municipal council to file cases against Honorable Amdai. And uh, they want me to jail the quartet as soon as, as it's legally possible. The idea is, of, is to forestall the vote of no confidence. And of course, he's wondering why, 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 why is, 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 is the problem? You go ahead and do that. And he says, I got un unwittingly Listen, everybody is trying to excuse themselves. I got unwittingly entangled in some same affair with which Mayor Mossi wants me to put them into jail. It happened, I, I was helping some friends in some court case. I made a ruling that clearly betrays my bias as an interested party. Worse still, these friends at some point paid me for giving me shares of a company that the municipal council is suing. Imagine. This is the kind of leader. No, this is the judge we are talking about. Leave alone the others. They are crooks. But now even the judge himself. Remember at the beginning when Alvita and Montana were discussing? And they were saying how hard it is to get justice because you have to grease the hands of the judges and the people in the judiciary. It's very sad. And so this is a coming true of what we saw in this kit. And um, he's trying to excuse himself from those issues and saying, even then, my name will be dragged in the case. My shareholding in the company in which they are shareholders, the ruling is I made complicates the whole matter. So when Harvester is telling him, why don't you excuse yourself, decide not to be in the in the in the ruling of the case, and he says I can't I can't I can't do something like that. I get amused at what he says on page one sixteen. Uh, look at this. He says, my brother, to err is human. You see. A judge does not operate in a vacuum. Listen to his, his words. The ethos um, prevailing in society influence his thinking and actions. His rulings are, in many respects, a reflection of the prevailing culture in the society. So what he's saying, like he had said in the previous scene, that everybody was doing it. Everybody is corrupt. Everybody is, is stealing. So why should not I also steal? And he's here still justifying and saying that actually I did that because the prevailing conditions in the culture, in my cultural society, dictated that I steal like everybody else. So I had no choice. I had to steal. Can you see how nobody is taking responsibility? None of these leaders is taking responsibility. Even when they do, very quickly, they turn and change that story. And so uh, my brother, the issue of rodents has told tormented me beyond measure. I have been seeing rats now. I want you to remember there is another person who was seeing things earlier. I have been seeing rats and other rodents running all over the place, even when my eyes are wide open. Even now, my brother. Lately, I have been, I have even, I'm even catching the smell of sewer rats. It is awful. It makes me want to throw up and my stomach is beginning to ache. You know, I have, I have ulcers. Oh, oh. Oh, and he starts crying because already he has ulcers and his ulcers are paining. I want to remind you of an instance that we had with uh, Mia Mosi on page 38. Maybe I should take you there. That this is uh, Jaden who is smelling the sewer rats and he's actually, even when his eyes are closed, there's somebody else who was also smelling something on page 38. On page 38, Mia Mosi is saying that, uh, um, I fear they will send me to prison I now see Baneta, Baneta, Baneta Express Prison each time I close my eyes. It is such a damned place. I can even smell the revolting stench of the cells, though I have never been there. And uh, Inspector Bembe tells him, actually he goes and says, it's a very distinct smell, so strong I have been unable to eat, to eat since yesterday. 
And Inspector Bembe, instead of helping, he tells him, you may need to chew something with a strange taste and a pungent smell, or in fact, something completely not neutral, like ordinary grass. And so um, you can see they're having the same problem. Now Judge Jaden is here, and he's also smelling the siwa rats. Miyamosi was smelling the Beneta prison and the cells, the smell of the cells. And I wanted to also note that, that you remember what uh, teacher Nicole said? That the wheels of justice are slow, but they are so sure they will surely happen. They will actually take effect. And so let's go back to where we were. And uh, the consequences of your evil actions are catching up with you, oh, Jaden, you can see that. And um, his, his ulcers are paining very much. And Harvester is asking him, did you eat something acidic? And Jaden says, I had, I had dinner here last night. And um, he took some food. I'm not able to pronounce those words. Trini, Dad, Dadian, Crab, and Kalalo. Where? That is their food. Eh? So, and the inspector of police owns this place was here. I now strongly suspect his part on my food somewhere in the kitchen. Can you imagine? I don't know whether that is being suspicious or it is true or something, whatever happened, but um, the, he's, he's not trusting that uh, the, the, the Inspector Bembe didn't do something. But I don't think he would do something. He really wanted Jaden to be alive because after all, their future belongs to him. He's the one who is holding their future in his hands now. Harvester, of course, now encourages him and uh, tells him uh, Jen, Jen says, um, I'm, having a, I'm having a proposal. You see the crisis we're having? I'm having a proposal. I can't go against Mossy and Bembe. I can't go against Simo and Moss, I mean, and Ted and Basdeo because of the things I've told you. This is what I'm having. I want to employ the principle of the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. It means that when confronted with a situation, when a decision must be made, Always make the decision that will resort into the greatest happiness of the greatest number of people. Popularized. Those are, that is what they do. They do, even if it's not right, as long as the greatest number of people will be happy, then you go ahead and the greatest happiness giving to the greatest people, even if it's not right, go ahead and do it. And of course, Jaden says, how do, Harvester says, how does it apply at the present situation? And of course, he tells him what he's up to. He wants to bring both of the teams together and let them look for something that they can do to solve their problems apart from fighting with one another. And so the reason why Jaden wanted Harvester to come is because they will listen to you. Just go and talk to them. You are their leader. You are a pastor. You are a religious person. They will respect you. Both parties, you can talk to them. Uh, and he says, most likely, you will cause them to see sense. And he says, um, you see, it will not be of it will not be in the interest of anyone if this matter escalates beyond here. But if we sit down and talk, all of us will be safe. An amicable solution will result to the greatest happiness for the greatest number. Do you see what I mean? And of course now they have they have uh Harvester says, I don't see a problem. I can, I, I see no harm in trying it out. I will talk to both parties. And Jaden says, please talk to them tonight and arrange a meeting first thing tomorrow morning in my chambers. You are a man of God. Speak to them. I know they will trust you. Now, surely, what kind of a man of God is this? As you talk about the theme of religion and abuse of that, the uh, abuse of religion and taking advantage and all that, it's important for us to remember that Harvester is corrupt. It's only that he hides in the name of God and also he hides behind the leaders and says, I am, I have no choice to, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. So that is it. As far as Act 4, Scene 1 is concerned, it was very short. Now that sets the pace for Act 4, Scene 2. Will there be a meeting? Will Harvester be able to talk to both parties? Will they have a meeting? What will happen? Join me in the next one so that we can have a look at it. Hello and a welcome to Act 4, Scene 2 of The Samaritan. Thank you so much. I hope that you have watched the other one, Act 4, Scene, um, scene 1. And uh, so the last time there was a meeting between uh, Judge Den and uh, Harvester. And they are discussing about the role that Harvester can do to help in this situation. And he's been tasked to the responsibility to go and talk to both parties. That is Simo, Ted, Basdeo, and then also talk to Miyamosi and uh, Bembe and let them call them for a meeting tomorrow first thing in the morning in my chamber so that we can talk about it. And now we're in the chamber 
and uh, Judge Jordan is the one on the seat, on the chairman's seat. And he welcomes them and uh, he said, I called you here. And the aim is to save our skin from the Samaritan. Can you imagine? They're not even embarrassed. They know what they've done. They know it is wrong. They know they are guilty. But after all, we just need to save ourselves here. The aim is to save our skin from the Samaritan. I believe this is an agreeable statement of intent. Of course, they all say there is no problem. And then Jaden says, I will, uh, we, you need to be, we need to begin from the beginning because you never hit a snake if you haven't seen its head. You need to be sure where you're hitting. If you hit it on the tail or hit it somewhere uh, far away from the head, you know what will happen. It will come back and bite you. And so um, that's why he's using that proverb. And uh, Miyamosi, of course, uh, Miyamosi now the, takes the discussion to a different direction and says, agreed. And without going into details, the problem we are facing is the attempt to remove me from office. I don't think that's the problem. I think we have bigger problems, like you people being corrupt. That is a problem. But anyway, for them, the fact that Miyamosi is being removed from the office is his biggest problem. And Simo says, no, far from it. The problem is your refusal to allow the reallocation of the budget or, this, or, or the submission of a supplementary estimate. It takes only either, it takes only either of these small steps to solve the problem before us. And then Harvester realizes this is a bad way to begin this meeting. So without due respect, I think our problem is the Samaritan. He takes us to the Samaritan. And of course now the conversation goes on where Bembe and Basdeo also brings in the issue of the skeletons in the, in the closet. And he says, I think the skeletons are, is it the green scandal? And then Simo says, there is no time for that crap here. Stop it or you will never know what hit you. And of course, now that starts, to, you can see Simo as a very temperamental person. Very temperamental. We've seen him in the past. He's hitting the tables. He's shouting. He's talking badly to people and so on. And Simo, at some point, then he says, yes, there's another way. There's no way of escape other than getting the money to fight our way out. That is the only medicine. The alternative is Baneta Express. Now he's saying, if you can't get us the money, then we go to prison. Then Mosi says, I will never buy the idea of getting that money from the municipal coffers. And it's an ugly situation. It's an ugly discussion. I don't like it. And after a bit of discussion here and there, Jaden says, I hope you're aware that the judiciary and the minister of local government are very concerned about what is happening here. They have put on a spotlight on us. And then he says, that's right. I got the information that the minister of local government has scheduled a high level meeting to discuss our municipality this afternoon. So they have drawn the attention of the national government. They are wondering what is going on down there. And Jaden says, I also got the information that the chief justice is contemplating taking action on the legal issues associated with the Samaritan. Gentlemen, the, a lot of beans have been spilled and the wheels of justice must turn or at least seem to turn. Can you imagine now what we are dealing with? That the judge is here saying it is true. Now at, at this moment, we are not our own. We've drawn interest even from the chief justice and we must seem to do something. We can't just keep quiet and wait for them to come and do it on our behalf. The wheels of justice needs to turn or may, at least seem to turn even if they're not turning. That is still corruption. I'm disappointed that judge is still talking like that. And of course, um, Simo is not happy about this. He's wondering, does that mean you will proceed with a case filed against us? He says, I, I th if you think strategically, that's the best way. And uh, Simo says, you live in a glass house and you're still insisting on throwing stones? That's a proverb. And of course, telling him, you know you, are, you have closets. And you, you continue shouting as if you're, 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 you're clear or you're clean. You should know that actually you also will suffer while we suffer. And of course, um, that meeting now starts to take a different turn because now they have started issuing threats on each other. And uh, the, 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 the judge Jordan tells them, by the way, there's an idea I'm having that we can proceed with the cases and actually pros uh, prosecute you or seem to initiate prosecution in order to preempt any legal moves against us from the other quarters. They are calling it the double jeopardy. Can you imagine that now we will take you to court and sue you, and I mean prosecute you, and look like we are starting off. So that now when we are starting off, the other people, maybe the national government, the local government, everybody, they will not focus on us. But Ramdae and uh, Ted they, and Simo, they're like, no, we can't do that. What if you die? Then you're not the judge. What if another judge comes to where you are? 
and uh, you die. And uh, uh, Bembe tells him, but then you don't even have to worry about dying because this one will live very long. But he says, what if we have someone else who is coming as judge? What will happen? And he says, um, uh, Jaden is getting solutions. He says from there, we'll have several option, options. We can determine the cases in our favor or by time through endless adjournments, we will have been dealing with many issues. We have been dealing with many issues in this way anyway. That's another case of uh, injustice, another case of corruption, another case of poor leadership. He's saying, he's actually admitting, this is what we'll do. We will be postponing the case many times. We will buy time with adjournments. We will determine it in, de determine it in our favor. And he's saying well, that is what we've been doing in the past. So really, this exposes how the judiciary is corrupt and how they are not taking their works very seriously. And it's very, very sad that even judge is holding a serious meeting with the top leadership of the municipality and municipality, and they are actually discussing how can we evade justice ourselves. And he says, I can't trust you. And of course, that goes on on page 124. He says, no, I will not do that. And now when Judge Jaden hits the the end of the road with the with them, they say we we don't want that. Uh, I, he says therefore, I have another idea. Why don't we try one more time to talk to Madame Nicole? Maybe if we see her, all of us, it will help. And they think, well, we, we've tried. We have talked to her. We've done. We've threatened her. We've arrested her. Everything and she's not budging. So I don't know. Maybe and and Mossy says, forget it. I tried. I tried to appeal for her mercy. She wouldn't budge. I tried intimidation. She wouldn't budge. I still couldn't get her to yield. And Basdeo says, you see, gentlemen, the way out of this for us is not money. It's power. All of us want power. I think that teacher wants power too. Why can't we give her some powerful position in the municipal council? Then Ted says she's a tough woman but very beautiful. You should look at her legs. Can you imagine? We're having a very serious conversation and then Ted decides to bring a, a woman's leg in the in this discussion. I think it's not being serious at all. And Simol is annoyed. He says, I wish you could have, you should, I wish you could somehow grow some brain. Of course, uh, he has been insulted, but uh, he deserves it. And so there is a conversation about whether do they uh, um, approach uh, Nicole. And finally, they realize, yeah, we need to approach this girl, but maybe we need to try and use a different a different method. And she says, I, I don't think this, this, it seems like she's playing power games. It seems like she's, it's a political conspiracy. The people who are supporting her, actually, it's very, it's very, very serious. We need to be very, very careful. This girl is, is more, as more powerful than we think. And of course, uh, they, they agree that it is true. We will go see her, uh, all of us, the way we are. And Basdeo says, we just, say, we just say we have had lengthy consultations and, as municipality leaders, and in appreciation of the influence she's currently wielding, we have decided she should be part of the municipal leadership after all. She's best suited to provide direction to the regard, as regards the Samaritan and the development it has triggered in the municipality. From there, we can let her tell us on the leadership position she would want to have. Already they have decided how they're going to bribe her, how they're going to trick her into joining the, the, the municipality as a staff. And so, of course, Jaden says, perhaps you can try besides our our presence all of us together is as the leaders of municipality may have may have a helpful impression on 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 her then ted has not even given up apart from talking about her beautiful legs he says i long to see her we should be living holding his head with both hands and oh i have a headache i badly need a beer now those are the leaders we are having when you're having very serious discussions he is talking about alcohol and women very sad then Ramdae, what, what did you smoke? Because I think you're not okay. You must have smoked something. And of course now, Bembe uh, they, and Judan, of course, in that conversation, they decide how do we, how do we, when do we see her and how do we see her? And then we should not, um, or do we go to school or do we summon her here? And they say we need to go to her school and we can leave right now. And because it is lunchtime, let's just go. And uh, let's alert the principal that we are on our way going. And then somebody says, I propose that we, uh, okay, of course, uh, they, they want to buy something for her. And um, he says, I have no objection, but do, don't we need some box of chocolate for her? It might be useful. It might be a useful incentive. Then Moses says, she won't take it. 
it will spoil everything. Can you imagine how powerful that is? That even your leaders know you don't have to bring anything because you will not take it. And this comes out and brings us to a place where now this the, the Samaritan app has really troubled and stirred the waters and they're very unhappy and they're looking desperately looking for a solution out. They've realized everybody now they are bound by one, bound by one problem that the Samaritan app is exposing them. Can you imagine if the Samaritan app didn't show up? Can you imagine if there was no one who raised an issue, the members kept quiet? The same crime, the same corruption would carry on. But now they know better and uh, they will they will have to behave differently now that is the end of act 4 scene 2 and uh, now we are on our way to see nicole in school so can you join me in act 4 act 3 act 4 scene 3 as you talk about where in school as you go to school and see madam nicole thank you very much for watching see you in act in act 4 scene 3